Hello everyone. I hope you're having a great uh, great day. Uh, it's good to be back with you after uh, feeling a little under the weather the last couple of days, but uh, I'm doing better today and uh, thankful for that. Well, we want to go back to our Word Go uh, Bible study from Bible Study Fellowship. Uh, I hope you get a chance to download this app on your phone. If you have a, have a smartphone, you can download it. You can even do it on your computer. That's what I'm doing here. And uh, there's just some really good depth to it. I think there's some good stuff here. And uh, I've enjoyed sort of still just beginning into to Samuel and the story of Samuel. And really, he's uh, just been born, and, and we're going to go back to uh, the beginning of Hannah's prayer as she delivers him to, to the temple, to the Lord, really. And, uh, you know, she, she made this promise that, that uh, if, if God would bless her with a son, she would dedicate him to the Lord. And so she brings him to the Lord, uh, brings him to the temple to serve the Lord. And uh, he's probably about four years old, which would be uh, quite a hard uh, you know, hard thing for a parent to give up a child that, that early in, in life. I'm sure they still had connection uh, through the years, a lot of connection, but, but uh, you know, they didn't have the, the, some of the things that we have today with, with uh, you know, online opportunities to be in touch with each other, even if we're a distance away. Uh, you know, it was uh, uh, even a phone. They didn't even have a phone to call uh, or text or, you know, any of the Zoom or whatever. Uh, those things were a long ways off, but uh, uh, no doubt they still kept it in touch. But but for sure, she is offering uh, her all when she gives this this son of God's blessing to uh, uh, to serve in the temple. Well, let's uh, go back and re we we kind of did a quick overview of this uh, the other day, and uh, today we're 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 going to go uh, a little deeper, cut just a couple of verses here of Hannah's prayer. So let's let's begin First Samuel chapter two. Uh, verses 1 to 2, that's what we're, we're looking at today. It says, Then Hannah prayed, and this is, again, as she's dropping off her son. Uh, then Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord, in the Lord my horn is lifted up. My mouth boasts over my enemies, for I delight in your deliverance. Uh, there is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one beside you. There is no rock like our God. Uh, just a couple que questions for your reflection. So what word or image from these verses could best help you focus on God uh, throughout the day? Uh, I think that word rock, you know, he's my rock. You know, I turn to him, he's my strength. He's the one that backs me up and, you know, gives me strength to make it through uh, each and every day. And so that's, that's a good one. You can pick your own from in there. There's some others that you might, might choose. And, and, number, and the next, next question says, Meditate on each claim in Hannah's praise of God in verse 2. There is no one holy like the Lord. Uh, so God is holy, right? Uh, there is no one beside you. In other words, He is so great, so amazing. He is above any and everything else. And uh, He's number one. There's no rock like our God. I just mentioned that uh, with the previous question. But... Uh, uh, something to hold on to. What response wells up in you? How would you explain each statement to a friend? Uh, you know who God mean, what He means to you, who He is to you. And then next comes the notes. Uh, the first section is called "Given Over to Pray with Praise." This is at the end of chapter one. Hannah, the faithful woman, wife and mother, stands with Elkanah and fulfills her vow to God. After she weans Samuel, you know, that's probably it's probably about three or four. Uh, she brings him to the tabernacle in Shiloh with a dedicatory or burnt offering. They worship God and devote Samuel to ministry under Eli the priest. Uh, this time Eli hears Hannah's prayer. And you know, remember before she had been praying, he couldn't understand what she was saying. He thought she was drunk and the whole thing. But this time he hears her prayer. In this parting moment, she fervently, joyfully praises the Lord. She also proclaims God's prophecy uh, the promised coming king and 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 again that that has to do i mean there's there's issues of prophecy there looking forward to uh well, Saul comes first then David and you know that king but there's also the king Jesus that'll be coming uh, eventually and and so she had, had talked about there um, my mouth boasts over my enemies for I delight in your deliverance uh, that's what that's referring to the 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 deliverance that's coming through Jesus it says, it's interesting and instructive that Hannah's prayer, recorded in verses 1 to 10, contains no petitions. No, she doesn't ask for anything. 
she she she's all it's all about praise and who God is and and those kinds of things. It's an interesting uh, part of this. Says Hannah's last and longest recorded words in Scripture are a purely wonderful expression of worship. Uh, I like that. You know, so often our prayers revolve around what we want from God, but uh, reality is, uh, you know, really it should be more about praising God and for who He is, and recognizing His goodness and His blessing and His uh, just just His grace and and all. His holiness. This verse 1 announces, My heart rejoices in the Lord, and the Lord my horn is lifted high. This is in the Bible, a horn symbolizes strength. Your hand is wisdom. God's power enables us to pray and wait in faith, even for years or a lifetime. She'd wait, waited a long time for this son, and, and she's you know received this son, and now she's giving him back to the Lord. Uh, but uh, I like that. God's power enables us to pray and wait in faith, even for years or for a lifetime. In Hannah's case, the Lord replaced her physical weakness, infertility, uh, with his power and strength uh, that's given through Samuel's birth and, and delivered her from the shame and ridicule of her enemies. Uh, remember, she had that, uh, there's that other wife, Peninnah, that uh, had been pretty hard on her because she couldn't uh, have a child, and, and now she does. And, and it's interesting, they say here, Hannah does not boast in herself, but her mouth is filled with boasts in the Lord. I like that. Her heart just overflows. It, it's it's uh, she's experiencing God's goodness and just bless you know speaks forth this thanksgiving and praise to God. So the next section says no one like him. Hannah is, has little to say of herself. Her entire song praises her glorious God. She continues. There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one beside you. There is no rock like our God. In her life and circumstances, only God is worthy to receive honor and and praise. Uh, that's he gets all the glory he gets all the the praise for for what god for what he has done uh, for her it's nothing that she did on her own uh, it's not her husband it's it's god uh, as many study resources call hannah's prayer the magnificat of the old testament uh, this title relates to relates hannah to another faithful woman uh, you may remember remember her her name is mary uh, the mother of jesus Mary sings a song of praise and prophecy recorded in Luke 1, 46-55, and her prayer is called the Magnificat, Latin for the prayer's first line, My soul glorifies the Lord. As you study and process Hannah's prayer, compare her words to Mary's harmonic echo generations later. In other words, just long time in the future, Mary comes along, and, and there's a lot of similarity between her prayer and, and Hannah's prayer here. And uh, this is God, as God fills her with his glory. And, and this is what it says. it says. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. Uh, you see the connection there. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Uh, it's, 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 you can see the connection there, because it's kind of the same themes come out in Mary's Magnificat as, as were in Hannah's. The next session is growing in praise. By choosing to fulfill her vow, Hannah knows God in a way she is not before. As God leads believers to trust and obey, their lives fill out and flourish like trees planted by the fresh flowing streams. Through faith in Christ, the Spirit leads believers to depend fully on God. In other words, I think of it kind of like a snowball. You know, the more you 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 receive from the Lord, the more you spend time with Him, the more you pray, the more you're in His Word. Uh, the more you want, the more you desire of, of him. And, and so as, as you know, Hannah responded in this way, her faith grew, and, and all of a sudden she, she comes forth with this uh, wonderful prayer of, of praise to God. And, and it's just like it's, you know, her, her faith, her, her uh, relationship with the Lord just gets better and better. Through faith in Christ, the Spirit leads believers to depend fully on God. We increasingly experience God's holiness, graciousness, and power as we fill our thoughts with Him and His praise more and more. Inasmuch as you are fully convinced of its truth, 
Uh, will you pray Hannah's prayer of praise this week? Our words of praise often reveal our heart's true focus. Where is our heart? What, what is our, you know, what, what is our heart, heart focused on? Is it the Lord? Our greatest love. What is our greatest love in our life? I love my wife. I love my girls. There's a lot of things I love in this, this world. I, Ohio State Buckeyes bat, football season just started. Uh, you know, I love a lot of things, but, but our greatest love, my greatest love is the Lord, and, and that's, that's the way it, it should be. Uh, our deepest thoughts. You know, we think deep sometimes about different things, but are, are our deepest thoughts centered on the Lord? Our true motives. Why do we do what we do? Is it because of the Lord working in us, or is it our own little whatever? Uh, what are our true motives? It says, as you praise God, challenge yourself to respond sacrificially. Uh, in other words, as you look at these things, how do you respond? How do you live? We've been talking a lot about the transformed life. How are you living the transformed life? Living it out around you. Uh, this is God, the faithful Savior and Redeemer of His people, always cherishes and makes the best use of all time, desires, people, and things we devote to Him. In other words, we give it all to Him. He's going to work in that. He's going to bless that. Uh, it's a truth that, that we can hold on to and know. Uh, but also it kind of works the opposite way too, right? Whatever we don't devote to him, he's not going to bless. He's not going to use for his kingdom. He's not going to, you know, whatever. Uh, as Hannah devoted herself to the Lord, then he blessed her and she breaks forth with praise. And uh, it's just a wonderful story of, of God's work in, in a person's life. And he'll work in our life that way too. Well, let's, uh, let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for this word, and we thank you for Hannah and her prayer, her really her devotion to you in, in bringing her son uh, to the temple to serve you. And Lord, to help us as we continue and learn more, help us to be people who praise you for who you are, praise you for your goodness and your holiness and your grace and all that you've done for us. Help us to respond to that by living the transformed life that you call us to, Lord. We need that. And we just ask for your continued blessing there. Lord, continue to be with those that are sick. I know there's several with uh, COVID and uh, different things going on. And I just pray for you to encourage those that need encouraging and to heal those that need healing. Just meet every need, Lord. Uh, maybe it's a financial need. Maybe it's a, a spiritual need, an emotional need. Whatever the need is, Lord, we just pray that you would meet that need. You are good. You are faithful. We just give you praise today, Lord. For all that you've done, all that you're doing, all that you're going to do. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with another devotional. But you have a great day. Enjoy this beautiful day. Have a good day in the Lord. Bye-bye.